doll. 23 minutes past six is the time. So news that self-isolation rules in England will be cut from seven to five full days have been welcomed by some companies dealing with staff absences. Now, Sarah's taking a look at what you should do if your employer doesn't quite seem to be following those rules. And so we've got to get our head around these new rules, five full days, and also how this all plays out at work. Yeah, that's right. Good morning. Good morning. And for businesses, for many, many months, they've been struggling with staffing issues, high sickness levels. For some, they've actually struggled to operate. So this for them comes as a welcome change. But as you say, it's thrown up a lot of questions. Good morning, everyone. Uh, these changes could make a big difference for sectors where people can't work from home. So jobs in factories, on production lines, shops or bars, for example. And from Monday, as we've heard, people in England can leave isolation after negative lateral flow tests on days five and six. And it's something that industry leaders have really been pushing for. Latest figures suggest that at the start of January, 7% of people in the UK were isolating. That's around 2 million workers. Some companies are actually reporting absence rates of up to 25%. And I spoke to the boss of a chocolate factory yesterday who told me half of his staff were actually stuck at home. So for many businesses, this change will have an immediate big impact, especially for the hospitality sector. Have a listen to this. I think it's, uh, it's become quite frustrating for staff that they actually are feeling quite well with this particular variant. Before, the, the previous variants were, were far more severe and that wasn't the case. And the last thing we want is for people to come back to work ill. That's not the case this time around. The guys want to be here, they want to be serving their cocktails, serving their customers. Um, that's what they live for. It's frustrating that if, when, they're, um, when they feel well, uh, they can't just get back in and, uh, and get on with that. But what happens if you're worried your boss is perhaps bringing people back too quickly? Well, first, you should discuss your concerns with your employer. If you're still not convinced, you can raise a formal grievance or contact the health and safety executive. And we're also seeing changes around sick pay from a list of companies, including IKEA, Next, Wessex Water and Ocado more recently, their unvaccinated staff will not get their full company sick pay if they have to self-isolate due to COVID exposure. And they will only get the minimum legal level of sick pay. That's around £96 a week. However, it's important to say if they test positive, they will get the full amount. So legally, what are the rules then? Well, businesses must have a good reason to do that. It can't just be to save money. And there is a precedent. Some companies already bar you from full sick pay if you're hurt doing extreme sports, for example. Now, HR companies say companies really need to tread carefully and make sure they're not discriminating against staff. If in implementing this, they are treating any staff members less favourably, and there's risk in that because you have to look behind the change. You know, are people choosing to be unvaccinated because of medical exemption? Maybe because of fear if they are a pregnant lady or race or religious reasons. And, you know, if they apply that rule and they are found to have treated someone less favourably, there is the risk of a discrimination claim. So that is, is a massive consideration, as well as the, the, the feeling it creates. Is it divisive in some way? What, what impact does it have on reputation? And in the world of the great resignation, what impact does it have on retention and recruitment? And we're going to be looking at all this in more detail after 8 o'clock. Do get in touch with some of your questions. We'll try our best to answer them. Contact us in the usual ways on screen now. And I think what we're seeing is a growing list of, of companies introducing some of these measures to try and encourage or pressure staff to get vaccinated. And I think there are some pros and cons to this approach. Um, it may mean some people perhaps test less because they might worry they, they can't afford to go off sick if they're not going to get the full sick pay. And then more broadly, we're seeing this tougher approach from industry because across the globe, politicians are really ramping up the rhetoric mm. on the unvaccinated.